with my Star Wars Bluetooth final project. What is happening is this P0 right here is playing the Star Wars Imperial March. And depending on the sequence of the march being played, these two LEDs are lighting up in sequence. When I use the NRF connector and connect over Bluetooth low energy, then on the board, on this breadboard, then the yellow light will turn on and then, like it just did, low, yellow light just turned on. And on the LCD screen that I previously mentioned, it will print Star Wars. I can use this project for many things. One thing that you can use this project for is a basis with my apps that I am creating using the MIT App Inventor. Using the MIT App Inventor, I'm trying to learn, using this project as a base, how to control more things with the app I am building, not just turning on lights, but controlling the volume of, say, a Pizio, and possibly even including a motor in it. This is my breadboard view. It is a fritzing diagram. So I have two separate breadboards and one Arduino one on one because there was too much to fit on one breadboard. So first we have from pin nine going to a P0. And the P0 is having its volume controlled by a 1K potentiometer. We have two LEDs both being grounded and going to digital output pins, so I'm able to control the, them being on and off during the program. And we have this yellow LED over here connected to pin 8, which is a PWM, so I'm able to control it in a different way than the digital output with a 100 ohm resistor and it being grounded again. Over here, we have an LCD screen LCD screen being con being powered and controlled by all the different wires going to it. I will explain that further in detail in a moment. And I can control the contrast of the LCD screen with this 1K potentiometer. And this is the schematic. Same thing as the breadboard, just a different view. This is the actual program. I am using the Star Wars Imperial March from a public domain called GitHub. And the author of it is Nick Sort. And the inspiration and open source code taken from SparkFun Tutorials. SparkFun Tutorial number one, blinking LED. SparkFun Tutorial number two, reading a potentiometer. SparkFun Tutorial number 14, using a PZO buzzer. SparkFun Tutorial 17, using an LCD screen. SparkFun Tutorial 21, using BLE, which is Bluetooth Low Energy. Now, to describe the breadboard and schematic in further detail, on the first breadboard, pin 9 connects to the PZO, which is the thing making the sound. Then a the wire connects the PZO to a 1K potentiometer, which controls the volume of the PZO. So by turning the potentiometer, I can increase or decrease the volume of the PCO. The 1K potentiometer is connected to analog AO, A0, excuse me, as well as one wire grounding it. I also have a red LED and a blue LED, both connected to the respective digital output pins and then grounded. The red LED is connected to digital pin 10 and then grounded, and the blue LED is connected to digital pin 13 and then grounded. Also, I have a yellow LED, and the yellow LED is not the same as the other two LEDs. This one is going to be controlled by Bluetooth, which I can control on my phone using the NRF connector. Uh, while the yellow LED is being connected, it is going through a 100 ohm load resistor. We are also sending out 3.3 volts to the LCD screen. 
we from the one on one board and then different ground the L C D screen is connected to a one K potentiometer that, that controls the amount of light that's being emitted from the L C D screen. So you can either increase or decrease the contrast. And the fourth pin connects to Arduino pin 12 and is specifically con used for controlling uh, selecting command register when data is low or when data is high. So basically, depending on certain circumstances, certain events will happen on the LCD screen. The fifth pin connects to the ground and when low is written, then to the register, high is read from the register. The sixth pin sends data to data pins when a high pulse is, when a high to low pulse is given. We don't use pins seven through 10 because they don't, aren't needed in my program. Pin 11 connects to pin five on the Arduino and is your data pin. And the same goes for pins 12 through 16, 12 through 15. The 15th pin connects the 3.3 volts and powers the LCD screen backlight. And the 16th pin connects to the ground on the bedboard and is the ground for the backlight. The program basically is already been explained, but I'm going to explain it again. It's the Imperial March from Star Wars being played and the red and blue LED going in sequence depending on the orientation of the song and when connected by connected to bluetooth then the lcd screen as well as the yellow led both turn on right here these constant integers i am setting up different notes this is how i play the lc excuse me <laughs> This is how I play the tune on the Piezo, how to set up a bunch of different notes to make the different sounds. The pu buzzer pin is how we connect the Piezo, the thing that plays the notes that we already predetermined. LED1, that is one of the predetermined LEDs, and then the second LED. Now, constant integer pin for light pin, that is going to be the pin that we control with the Bluetooth. And the counter, the counter is how we see which part of the program we're in. So the program knows which part of the song to play. We're also including libraries from the Arduino code, including liquid crystal, which is uh, how we control the LCD screen, and Curie BLE, which is mostly used for receiving and transmitting Bluetooth data. We are setting up Bluetooth peripheral, which is like each different board, one one board has a different peripheral and it's specific to that board. So we know what board we're using. This is the peripheral, uh, like the number sequence to connect to it. When we set up the unsigned end characteristic, what we are saying is we are able to read and write the data being transmitted and put through. The liquid crystal, these are the pins connecting liquid crystal, which I already mentioned before. Serial begin, LCD screen begin. This is just starting the program as well as starting the LCD screen. We're setting the pin mode, I mean light, pin to an output, so we're able to control it. LCD screen is clear, so in case for some reason anything was on the LCD screen, it's been cleared. Also, when we go through the program and it's looping, this will make sure that it clears everything that was already printed. This is setting up the name on the NRF connector, so I'm able to determine which Bluetooth I should connect to. In this case, it is called light service. This is just setting it up as well. Add attribute and switch characteristic. Switch characteristic is basically when a different amount of data is transmitted to the byte array, then 
it will cause the light to either go on or off. The initial value for the set value is zero, so it's going to begin off. And then we're going to begin the BLE peripheral, allowing us to connect to it. And it's going to print that. In the void loop, we're going to clear the LCD screen again. We're going to connect the BLE central to BLE peripheral. So basically, we're connecting the already predetermined data to being controlled by the program. I set up two different sections of the song so that I don't have to retype the code each and every time that it goes through. It can just play first section or second section. These are the different notes that will be played. And then a delay. And then repeating the second section. This is the loop that determines what part of the song is being played. This is an algorithm that determines like how long each part of the song is played for. And digital write LED pin one turns on pin one and turns off pin one after a certain duration, which is the which is reliant on the song part that is being played and the same thing for LED pin 2. This is the gap between the uh, between the PCO playing and not playing and then the counter making it continue. This is the first section and this is the second section. All of these are just notes this is the BLE central, which is connecting and altering the BLE. It prints connected to central. Serial print and putting the address. If connected, then it will go into this loop. If not connected, it will go into a different loop down there. One connected, if the value of the byte of A is switched, then it will turn on or off. If it is, has a value of zero, then it will stay off. Anything other than zero, it will turn on. This line of code right here is for when I implement my app inventor. So I can use it on a slider, so I can slide the light to be brighter or less and then analog writing that is the same thing for the app inventor that's included in that if the value is switched uh anything other than zero it prints led on it prints high and then it on the lcd screen it prints star wars and on serial monitor it prints BLE connected. If not, it prints LED off, disconnected, light pin being low, which is the digital write amount value, and BLE disconnected. So, So right now on the serial monitor, it should be printing, Shoot, sorry, turned it on and then off again. Right now the, it is disconnected, so it's going to say LED off, disconnected. It's printing out each section of the song, second section, and then it'll print out first section right here. Right here, this is the, like, this is what we're connecting to. This is the name of our peripheral. I'm about to connect to it. So this will change from disconnected and LED off to saying LED on and BLE connected.
and then it goes through continuously, first section, then it's gonna, after the first section is done playing, second section, and then I can turn the LED back off again. And once I turn the LED back off again, which I'm about to do right about now, then it will say disconnected and LED off. And yeah, that's my program. Put a lot of work into it. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks. Have a nice day. Bye.